Trip, we want to, again, highlight Vacation Bible School this year, uh, July the 11th through the 13th, the second week in July. We are so excited about VBS. Um, again, registration will be available both online and in person. And for you all that are uncomfortable uh, with registering online, there will be an opportunity for you to register in person beginning next Sunday. Again, please take advantage of this opportunity. Um, I'm pleased to announce that uh, we have quite a few that have registered for VBS, and we thank you. And so uh, please stay connected to what's happening in our church. Uh, and again, we're looking forward uh, to a great vacation Bible school. Amen? Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord on today. Amen. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You can do better than that. Why don't you stand on your feet and give God some praise? Come on, give the Lord some worship in this place. Bless his name in this place. Lift him high in this place. Amen. Before, amen, before we give our welcome to all of our visitors, we want to recognize that the day is Juneteenth. Amen. 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 Juneteenth finds its origin uh, in June 19, 1865 uh, in Galveston, Texas, where Texas issued uh, a mandate saying or executive order saying that we are free. Amen. 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 That's something. Come on, y'all. There was a time where we couldn't drink out of water fountains and do certain things. We had to do, amen, the opposite than others. And we thank God and we celebrate him for his liberation. Amen. And we continue to strive and make these advancements as a community. Amen. 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 We want to welcome all our visitors and guests. Amen. To the Second Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. If you're all visiting with us. For the first or second time, we thank God for you. We're grateful that you have decided to make Second Baptist our sanctuary of praise, your house of worship on today. On behalf of Bishop Barlow and the entire SNBC family, we welcome you to the sanctuary of praise. You're welcome. You are welcome. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together for our visitors' guests. You may be seated at this time. Amen. Amen. It's happy time. It's giving time. Amen. It's worship time. We worship God through our giving. Amen. Amen. We're grateful that God has been a provider, that God has been a way maker, that God has looked past our faults and seen all of our needs. We want to encourage each of you and thank each of you how you continue to give out of sacrifice and obedience. It's because of your tithe and offering that we're able to do ministry here at SNBC. And we want to encourage you to continue to give. You can give several ways, PayPal, Cash App. You can give through Hotmail. Or you can mail your tithe and offering to the church at 1000 Housing Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee, 370 013. Amen. However you choose to give. We just want to make sure you take advantage of these platforms. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord at all times. Come on. I'll bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. Anybody going to bless him today? Bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord. Bless the Lord at all times. Amen. Put your hands together for our tithe and offering. Amen. Amen. We're blessed, church. Amen. We are blessed. And we're blessed because of your generosity and God's goodness in your life. Amen. Amen. Let us now stand to recite our vision statement on together on today.
Amen. We want to recite this with clarity and with conviction. I see a people of God being one with God's vision for his kingdom. I see the saved reaching the unsaved and uncommitted. I see compassion at work in the lives of people. I see a community of believers in daily communion with the creator of life. Let us all say together, we see transformation and let it start with me. Put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together for our vision statement. Amen. Amen. I want to be blessed with the reading of the scripture and prayer by our very own Elder Bruce Hams. Amen. Amen. Our scriptures this morning is taken from Psalms 150, New Livingston Translation. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequal greatness. Praise him with a blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with the lark and harp. Praise him with tambourines and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes, let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can do better than that. Praise the Lord and the beauty of his tabernacle. Let every heart say amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we begin this dialogue by first saying thank you. Lord God, when each one of us is present here this morning, take an inventory of all our lives, the words come forth, thank you. You've been so good, and you're still good. And Father, we said thank you. We thank you, Father, because you have allowed each one of us to have a personal relationship with you. Oh, God, there's times when he sought out earthly help and it wasn't there. But, oh, God, when we all went in our secret closet and had a talk with you, Oh, God, not only did you allow us to speak, but you spoke back to us. And we said, thank you. Now, Lord God, we ask that you continue to bless the shepherd of this house. Bless his wife. Bless his family as a whole. And then, Father, as we sit in this congregation, we ask that you remove anything that would hinder us from hearing the word of God as this preacher brings the word today. Oh, God, bless him. Give him your spirit. But most of all, give us a hear in ear. Not only let us hear, but allow us to proclaim and walk and live in your courts. Oh, God, bless him. Father, you know what's going on in this world. One of these old days, it's all over down here. Let all of us see you in your glory. 
This is my simple prayer, my sincere prayer, my humble prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus in this place today. We want y'all to help us praise him.
put your hand together. Amen. 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 Lay down my burden. Down by the riverside. Amen. Amen. Taking us back to old school. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, praise team. Amen. Thank God for our musicians. Amen. Amen. Thank God for our musicians. Amen. I remember when I was aboard the house, I'd be standing up and they'd be rocking. Amen. Amen. They didn't have all the instruments, but they had the voices. Amen. And them sisters, amen, they started patting their feet on them old wooden floors. Some of y'all know about them churches that had old wooden floors. Amen. That's where, the, that's where you got the beat from. Amen. With the hand clapping. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the old school. Amen. Amen. I'm going to lay down my burden. Down by the river. I ain't going to study war no more. Amen. Amen. I'm looking for that day. Amen. I don't know about you. I can lay down my burden. I don't have to worry about backbiters, no haters. Amen. Amen. God be in control. Amen. He be super ruling, amen. Waiting for that day, amen. Again, we are thankful for what God has done, what he is doing for us. Amen. We are so blessed, amen, to have with us again our young preacher, amen, Ella Gucci, amen, Minister of Education Department will come to us this morning, amen, and uh, bring us a word, amen. He asked me, he said, you still want me to preach on this Father's Day? I said, well... Amen. Come on. I, I sit back and listen. Amen. It's Father's Day. Amen. Amen. We thank God for fathers. Amen. 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 I thank God for my father. Amen. Amen. He was, he was my hero. Amen. He was the one I looked up to. Uh, all my life, I never looked at nobody else other than my father as being my hero. Amen. I thank God for his love, for his family. Amen. How he loved my mother, loved all his children. Hard worker. Amen. So I thank God for him. Amen. And I thank God for fathers. Amen. 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 What a blessing. What a blessing. If you don't have an earthly father, that's a heavenly father. Amen. Amen. That is a heavenly father. And that love all of us. Amen. That love all of us. Amen. And so after the hymn of preparation, Ella Gooch will come as God has prepared him to come. Amen. Let us put our hand together for the preacher. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see another Father's Day. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. God, in this moment of preaching and fellowship and sharing, we pray that your presence would inhabit this place. Hide me behind the cross. We stand for no shape, form, or fashion, but we stand to give you glory. God, help me to say it right. Help your people to hear it right so that we all can get it right. All that I am, I am because of thee. And all that I'm not, I'm not because of me. Allow the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart 
to be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, let everyone say together, amen. Put your hands together. Amen for the Lord. On today, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. We greet you with Jesus' joy this beautiful Sunday morning. As I've said before and I'll say it again, this is the day that the Lord has made and we choose to rejoice. We have a responsibility to joy, rejoice and be glad in it. We give God all the glory, honor, and praise on today. Certainly we thank God uh, for our shepherd on today and for this opportunity that he has permitted for me to share with you all on today, on this very special day on Father's Day, to my brother and friend, Elder Hams, uh, to Elder Houston, to the deacons of our church, to the trustees of our church, uh, to this wonderful praise team, these gifted musicians uh, who has certainly brought us into the presence of God on today. Amen. 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 We just thank God for each of you. We do not want to go past this moment too quickly. Uh, oftentimes, we forget just how significant fathers are and that the role that fathers play in the lives of people. We celebrate every father in this place and every father that is watching us online, every father They'll be watching us uh, for the years to come. And for you all who have been father figures to young men and women who are without their father, we celebrate you on today as well. For the selfless sacrifices that you have made to pour into somebody else's life. And for the fathers who have joined families who are not their own, we celebrate you on today as well. For stepping in and being that man that the children need and that the mother needed in their life. Amen. We celebrate you on today. We celebrate the grandfathers who spoil our children and send them back home to us. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I want to get too many amens on that one. Eh? Amen. We celebrate you on today. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Again, there is a word that God has placed on my heart that comes out of the prophecy recorded by Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 37. I'm going to look at the first 14 verses. If you would, stand with me if you're able for the reading of God's word. If you don't have a Bible, you can see it on the screen behind me, Ezekiel chapter 37. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. The Bible records, Ezekiel said, the Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Then he asked me, son of man, can these bones become living people again? Oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I'm going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you. 
and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I spoke this message just as he told me. Suddenly, as I spoke, there was a rattling noise across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves and complete skeletons. Then I was watched, muscles and flesh form over the bones. Then the skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the winds, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath from the four winds. Breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded me and breathe and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying we have become old and dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Therefore prophesy to them saying, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Oh, my people, I will open the graves of the exile and cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, oh, my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit into you and you will live again and return to your homeland. Then you will know that I am the Lord, have spoken and have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. You may be seated. Thank you so much for your obedience. I want to talk for a brief moment for the 15 minutes that I've been given. <laughs> I want to talk from the subject, get up. Get up. Get up. It's time to go to school. Get up. It's time to go to church. Get up. It's time to go to your game. Get up. It's time to go to work. Get up. Is the colloquial expression it is the sentiment that flows through everyone's home. It's an expression. It's an awakening that reminds not only my children, my wife, and myself, but all of you all who live on planet Earth, that there is something for each of us to do. It's a reminder that there is a purpose and a meaning to put one foot in front of the other. Get up! You can't lay there all day because there is something for you to do. Get up. The 
there's something for you to do. Ezekiel on his 30th birthday was the second group of captives that were taken away in exile. In chapter 1, Deacon Jeff, sitting by the Carib River, The Lord prophesied to him and called him to prophesy. Ezekiel spent most of his life prophesying the coming judgment to Israel. Because of their rebellion and disobedience, church. In chapters 36 through 38, it shifts from judgment to restoration. The fascinating thing about the narrative And the story of Ezekiel is this. Is that God left the temple after it was destroyed and followed his people to exile. God loved his people so much that he uprooted himself and followed his people to exile after issuing judgment upon them. The grace of God is simply this. While yet God has to punish sin, he promises to still remain with us. While yet God punished Israel for their disobedience and rebellion, God was still loving enough to remain with his people. Is that not your testimony on today? Surely you didn't get it right every time. Surely God had to spank you for what you did and didn't do. But the good news is that he's still with you. That God has chosen to never leave you nor forsake you. That he loves you so much. That while yet in one hand he punishes you, but in the other he embraces you. And in chapter 37, the Bible says, that God carries this prophet to a valley of dry bones. And the text says that he permitted Ezekiel to walk through the valley and survey the condition. The observation of Ezekiel was simply this. Not only were there bones, but the bones were dry. And God, in his infinite wisdom, asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? Ezekiel expressing his incapability. And limit and limitations says God only you know. (laughs) Y'all 
God, only you know. And after Ezekiel acknowledged that he didn't know, God permitted him to prophesy to the bones. It's in the text. The text says that when Ezekiel prophesied to the bones, the bones begin to take on skin, sinew, and flesh. The bones begin to come together, and it formed a great army. But they were only bodies. And God told Ezekiel to prophesy to the wind so that these bodies may have life. Bible says that God sent wind from four corners of the earth and deposited life into these bodies. The text pretty much concludes that this would be a sign that God remained faithful to what he said he would do. Now give me my 10 minutes and we'll be out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, the thematic thrust or the thesis of this sermon is simply this. That the God we serve is a God of a second chance. That's what you can go home and tell your friends who don't go to church when they ask you what the preacher talked about. You simply tell them this, that the God you serve is a God of a second chance. That God is so faithful and that God is so good And that God is so merciful that God permitted me a second chance where I failed the first time. And that God in his infinite wisdom and God that his grace has provided me another opportunity to get it right. Is there anybody in here that's not too arrogant enough that can testify that God not only gave you a second chance, but God gave you another chance? After all the mistakes and missteps, after all the failures and misfortunes, God gave you another chance. The text says that Ezekiel was in the valley and that the bones were dry. Brothers and sisters, in order for it to be bones, there, must, there should have been life at first. In other words, these bones were people that used to be alive. Come on, y'all talk to me. And so the text suggests that there had been something that took place that caused these people to die. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 26, God promised that his people would be eaten by the beast of the field and their carcass would be eaten by the birds of the air. The bones still out and remaining were significant because it pointed to the fact of how faithful God was to his judgment. It was a disgrace for bones not to be buried and to be left out in the field. In Jewish history, they were put in catacombs. And after they were put in catacombs, they were put in something called an ostracy. And an ostracy was, it was where the bones went when new bodies had to come in the catacombs. Okay? So you don't understand, so let me give it to you. All I'm trying to say is, is that what was used to be there, it's now dead, but God has given them another chance to get it right. The bones were dry. The bones were bleached. The bones had been sitting in the Middle Eastern sun, experiencing the heat of the day. And God asked Ezekiel 
Can these bones live? Now, God asked Ezekiel a question that God already knew the answer to. Now, here it is. Ezekiel was a priest. And priests in the Old Testament could not be around dead things. Could not interact or touch dead things. Because it would, dis- it would defile them. So God puts Ezekiel in a condition and circumstance that would literally contradict who he is. And he asked him a question that he already knew the answer to. Brothers and sisters, the question that God asked Ezekiel was simply this. It simply highlighted Ezekiel's limitations and Ezekiel's dependability upon God. That Ezekiel within himself could not understand or answer the question, but he knew that God knew the answer. And brothers and sisters, I want to let somebody know today that whatever that you're wrestling with, maybe you don't know the answer, maybe you don't know how to get out of it, but the God you serve has all the answers. Is there anybody in here that can give God worship and praise because you know a God that can give you the answer to what you need? God through the prophet Ezekiel speaks to the bones. God leads him to the valley and asks him to survey and ask him, could these bones live? Ezekiel saw the bones and they were out there laying. How does this speak to young African-American men? What does this narrative say to our young fathers and men on today? It says this, y'all. For my young men that will be watching me online and for the young men who are in here on today. That the bones represented potential. Potential is unrealized ability. And the bones laying there before the prophecy took place, was simply looking at potential. Young men, fathers, potential is not promised. You have to put the work in to that potential become possibility. Possibility is the quality of something being possible. So the narrative shifts from potential to possibility. Now the problem with us is that our young men remain in potential and can't see the possibilities. And what you have to understand is this. You may have the gifts and talents and resources, but if you don't utilize them and put it to work, you'll leave with just potential and not possibilities. Can these bones live? Ezekiel saw the bones, but God saw the potential and possibility. And that's what I want to let my men and fathers know today, that while, yes, society has written you off, and while, yes, society does not embrace and not celebrate enough 
our young black fathers who are holding it down every day, I want to let you know that the God we serve sees you right where you are. That the God we serve sees your potential and sees the possibilities. My young men that are incarcerated, you have potential and yet you have possibility. The gifts and talents that God has given you don't allow your situation and being confined to prison to limit what you can do. Ethan, Boston, MJ, and all the young men of this church, you are blessed with gifts and potential. To lay in the valley and not utilize the potential and possibilities that God has given you will continue to allow you to be dry. But once you recognize the specificity and gifts and anointing that God has placed in your life, then you can rise up and see all that God has purposed for you to be. Can these bones live? I don't know, God. But you know. And God permitted him to prophesy to the bones. Now, here's the mercy and the grace of the text, y'all. Please do not shout. Because we in church and we don't do that. We don't say amen. We don't lift our hands. We don't do that in church. So just be quiet, okay? The bones had been in the heat, John, and they were dry. And from the observation, according to Ezekiel, they were very dry. But here it was. They still were there. Somebody can tell me. That after sitting out there long enough, the bones should have disintegrated because of the heat of the Middle Eastern sun. But the fact was that the bones were even dry, but they were still there, which signifies that you have another opportunity to take advantage of this time. The mercy and grace of this text is simply this. When I didn't get it right... God didn't take me out. That I'm still here. That after all that I've been through, after all the slander, after all the backbiting, after all the putting down, I'm still here. God permitted me another chance. The bones should have been disintegrated after sitting in the sun. But God just permitted them to dry out. Who am I talking to on today? That your life is dry. That you have lost a sense of meaning and purpose. That you have failed to recognize your potential and possibilities. But watch the text. Son of man, can these bones live? Thou sayest, or thou knowest. God, in his sovereignty and wisdom, permits Ezekiel to speak to the bones. Here's the shout, y'all. When there are things dry and dead in your life, you have to learn to speak the word. God has given you an anointing and a power to speak over your life, to speak over your children, to speak over your husband, to speak over your wife, to speak life into anything that is dead in your life. Get up! Speak the word! Prophesy! 
prophesy over your finances, prophesy over your dreams. Whatever God has purposed in your heart to do, get up and do it. Bible says that when Ezekiel spoke to the bones, the bones began to shake and rattle. Can't you hear the bones in the valley? Shaking and rattling. And the text says that the bones begin to form. I can see the bones if I can. Use it and work it like the old preachers. I can see the toe bone connecting to the foot bone. I can see the foot bone connecting to the ankle bone. And I can see the ankle bone connecting to the shin bone. And we're from the shin bone to the tibula and then to the fibula. And then from the fibula to the sternum and the waist. And then from the waist to the shoulders and neck. And the Bible says that they stood there as an army. But they were only bodies. After you realize that you have potential, and you realize that potential is not promised and that you got to put the work in for potential to become possibility, now you can live with purpose. Now you can stand with your shoulders square and see the purpose that God has intended for your life to be. Ezekiel recognized that, hey, we got something here, God. But they ain't moving. They not breathing. They just taking up space. Lord have mercy. Who am I talking to on today? That you just taking up space. That you not living. You just existing. You walking around dead and dry. And not seeing the purpose and plan that God has for your life. Get up. Text says, Sister Donna, Ezekiel spoke to the wind. And the Bible says that the wind from the four, corner, four corners of the earth began to pump life into the bodies. That word wind in the Hebrew past is the word ruah, which we get our word spirit. The Greek word for spirit is pneuma. And the Bible says that God breathed ruah into the life of these people. This existing army that had a purpose. This existing army that was being used by God. Was now given a second chance by God. And the Bible says that when the wind began to blow into these bodies. These bodies begin to take on life. And I want to let somebody know today that God has a purpose and a plan for your life. That God has given you the potential, but you got to learn how to make your potential into possibilities. And the text says, that when life began to go into the bodies, the Bible says that God spoke to Ezekiel and said, this is being done to let you know that I'm a God that keeps my promise. And is there anybody in here that can give God praise that you know that God is a promise keeper? That whatever God promised, he is able to perform. Can you give God praise that God is giving you a second chance? Is there anybody in here that can give God worship? Because when you got it wrong, 
the first time God gave you another chance. And the text says that they became an army. And what I like about this text is that after they got life, they stood with purpose. And is there anybody in here going to stand with purpose? Going to stand united to all my men, to all the brothers. I want to let you know that you can get up out of your situation. Don't make excuses. Don't blame the white man. Get your behind up and make something with yourself. Ain't nobody gonna give you nothing. You gotta work with what you got. I heard somebody say that God is good. God is good. I said, ain't he good? Can you get up? Trayvon Martin, get on up. Michael Brown, get on up. Tamir Rice, get on up. Philando Castrillo, get on up. Of Aubrey, get on up. Can you say yeah? Young black men, take your place in society. Be what God wants you to be. I speak life. I speak blessings. I speak the anointing. I speak God over your life. You are the head and not the tail. You are a young king. You a mover. You a shaker. You gonna break barriers. You gonna do things that your mom and daddy didn't do. Can you say yeah? Can you say yeah? Can you give God praise? Get up, black man. Get up. You can be anything that God wants you to be. Say yeah. Amen. Let the church say amen. Church say amen again. Amen. It's time to celebrate. Amen. Amen. Get up. Get up. Get up. Amen. We thank God for the word. We thank God for this preacher. Did he not preach? Amen. Yes. Did he not yes. preach? Amen. That we'll stand, those are with us, as we extend an invitation to the discipleship. Yes. The preacher has spoken prophetically in the life. people of God. 
He has challenged us that we can get up. He has said to us that our condition does not have to remain the same. He said to us that God is a God of second chance. Maybe there's someone who you've been knocked down by life. And perhaps someone told you that you deserve what you got. But I'm glad that we serve a God that look beyond our faults. He give us another chance. But you got to get up and know that God can help you up. So if you're that person, you're down now. And the word of God has spoken to you. Give God the chance to be a part of your life. Acknowledge him right now as your savior, as he is the savior of the world. If you're watching us by Facebook, or maybe YouTube later on, and that word has spoken to you today, Put in the comment, I receive Jesus Christ today as my Savior. I receive Jesus Christ today as my Savior. And if you are watching us and, and you don't have the freedom of mobility, reach out to your chaplain. And say, I heard the preacher talk about a second chance. And I received Jesus Christ yes. as my Savior today. Yes. Those of you with me, if there's anyone, if not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this is your opportunity to give your life to Jesus. You may be here, you already given your life to Christ, but you don't have a church, a local church, where you can use the divine gift that the Holy Spirit has given you to work among brothers and sisters for kingdom purpose. If the Lord has spoken to your heart, send a second Baptist where you can do that. We offer you a chance to come today. Invitation to Christian discipleship. The invitation to follow Jesus by letter, by baptism, a Christian experience. If there be one, will you come? Will you come? We thank God. For all he has done. Sin that's not here with us today. You may take your seat. Amen. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the preacher. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Ella. Amen. Let me share this with us before we go. There were two young men that I, I saw something on Facebook and I'd been intending to say something about it and Elder brought it back to my mind as he was talking about young men's potential and possibilities. And uh, I saw something I think was Ethan and Boston, I think, on Facebook. Was that, that seems correctly. Ethan got a certificate for something in school. 
Wake Ethan up. Boston, I think Boston got two certificates, one for being a math quiz. And you got four? Uh, come on up. I want, I want to recognize these young men. I saw Ethan, and I, I've been intent to come, come on up here, Ethan and, and Boston. And when we have young men doing outstanding, outstanding things in school, we need to recognize them. Amen. 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 And uh, all our young boys are not bad. Amen. Amen. Now, pastor don't carry cash money, but pastor has money. I'm going to cash app your mother $20 for you, Ethan. And I'm going to cash app your mother $20 for you, Boston. How's that? Y'all get home. <laughs> so I'm going to sit down and cash app some money for y'all right now. Amen. And thank you all for rep uh, rec uh, representing, I think they say Thank you all for representing young African-American men. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. You may take your seat. Church, say amen. 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 Thank you so much for giving me the grace to go past my 15 minutes. Man, I appreciate it, Pastor. <laughs> Try to be obedient. Um, our summer polos are in for the men. Amen. Elder Hams uh, has those on standby ready to give out for all the men uh, who purchased one. Please go to the fellowship hall and get your polo. SNBC polo. Make sure you rock it this summer. Represent. Amen. I'm rocking mine. It's too hot for ties and shirts. Amen. Amen. Um, and again, we thank all the fathers on today. Have a wonderful day. Ladies, take care of the men today. Amen. Y'all spoil the men today. Amen. 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 I know y'all will. Amen. Amen. And again, we love all of you all. Thank you, young men. Recognize the potential and possibilities that God has given you. The sky's the limit. And just know there's nothing you can't do if you put your mind to it. Amen. Amen. Let us stand to be dismissed. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. May the blessings of Almighty God that are fully revealed in Jesus Christ be yours this day. In Jesus' name. Let us all sing together. Amen. Amen. Everybody, amen.
Go in peace and return in love. Happy Father's Day.